What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to my floor. So I'm in this hoodie because I think it makes me look like a forest nymph. I am filming a video right now as like a buffer. What are the words that I'm looking for? Basically, this video is intended as my safety net because I had another video planned for this week, but it's taking me longer to complete the project that I started than I can crack out in a week. But I can do other art in the meantime and something that requires a little less time. So basically, if you're seeing this video, it's because I failed to complete the project that I had planned for this weekend in the appropriate amount of time it happens. I don't judge myself. It's okay to be in over your head occasionally. <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> but you know, I still have things that I want to share with you and it's it's okay. It's just okay to like take a little longer and reschedule as you require. I am still very excited to show you what I'm creating, so you will eventually see it. It's just that you're not going to see it this week. <laughs> Sorry. But there's no reason why we can't still have fun together, right? Oh. I feel like I can hear the room so much better now. <laughs> Look what it's done to my hair. So wait, I have something to show you. I made an impulse purchase. If you've been following along with me so far on YouTube, you will know that I recently began practicing watercolor and doing watercolor paintings. And I had an Amazon gift card to use. So I used part of that to purchase myself. Himi gouache. I have had my eye on this item for quite a while. I thought that gouache would actually be a really fun thing for me to get into. First, because whenever I see pictures of paintings in gouache, I always love them. They're beautiful and they have a lovely illustrative style to them that I think is very unique to gouache. And because it seems like a really happy middle ground between acrylic, which is the paint that I usually partake in, and watercolor, my newfound love. So this could be another newfound love. This arrived recently. I've been very eager to give her a try. And honestly, like the reason I'm holding it like this is because it's so heavy. <laughs> so Himi is a jelly gouache. I'm sure a lot of people who maybe clicked on this video if you haven't already come to my channel because you like me, you probably know all of this information. But for the people who come here to see me because they're my fam and they like to follow along with whatever I'm doing, or if for some reason you came here because you're looking for information on Himi Gouache, I am definitely not an expert, so that was very brave of you. But anyway, <laughs> gouache ordinarily comes in tubes, right? But this is apparently jelly gouache, and it comes in these cute little, like, plastic tubbies. There, There's quite a lot of paint in these, like, that's pretty impressive. So as a result, this thing is large and heavy. And I kind of forgot that when I ordered it. And then when it arrived and I saw how big it was, I was like, woof, like, whoa. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised with how much media I get in this little set. And they give you brushes. How exciting is that? And they're pretty brushes. They're like the same mint green color as the case that it comes in. I'm excited. I've been wanting to play with gouache and now I will have the opportunity to do just that, and I'm going to do it with all of you, so I'm going to stop talking now. I will, uh, pull up a little, a little drawing that I did, and we're going to do a painting of that drawing. It's a landscape, and I hope you enjoy. Pixel, you're the prettiest cat that I've ever seen in my life. You're oh so sweet, I want to smooch the top of your head. You're such a baby, mama loves you. Pixel, the sweetest baby. All right, I'll, I'll stop that now, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie, so I went through the arduous process of opening this palette. I'm just gonna show it to you here real quick um, because it took quite a while to get all of the sticky labels off of all of these cups of paint. First of all, I guess the only bit of feedback that I have about this set is that it's very strange how tightly fit all of these things are in here and the palette gets quite dirty when it's all closed in with the lid on and stuff like that and I really hope that doesn't become a problem in the future. Um, it's going to be a, a pain in the butt I think to like have to clean it all the time but really what I'm worried more so about is that I don't want the colors to get contaminated but I am pretty pleased with how they look. They sure look pretty and um, the consistency is so interesting. They just, I mean is it just me or like 
Does anybody else think of pudding cups? <laughs> In fact, as I was peeling the labels off of each of these little tubs, I had this like strange intrusive thought in my head that was like, lick them, L lick the label. <laughs> I promise I didn't, I didn't eat the paint. That's not good, don't eat the paint. But you know, I mean like, how can you blame me? They just, they look delicious. Especially this one, I mean, come on, it's brown. It looks like chocolate. It just made me hungry for chocolate pudding. Why am I like this? Anyway. I did swatch my colors. Oh, and then uh, I did also go through the process of I reorganized the order in which the paints come in. When I opened the set, they didn't seem to have any rhyme or reason as to how they were organized. And I tried to put like color families together and keep it aesthetic and stuff like that. I may arrange it again, I'm not even sure, but for the most part it was really just for my purposes. But this is getting me very excited because I'm always such a fan of how gouache looks and I love that these dry matte. They are perfectly matte, there's absolutely no shine, so that's gonna be really cool to experiment with that. The only thing I haven't done so far is experiment with how they look when you dilute them with water. So I think that's gonna be another experiment that I try off camera, and then this evening when I'm finished with my work day, I will return to this gorgeous palette of paints and we will paint a picture. See you then. This painting is based off a photograph that I took in my phone, and it's of a beautiful public park that's in Wilmington, Delaware, where some of my friends live. I'll be sure to post a picture of this up on the screen so that you can see the reference that I was using. I'm going to try to get into the habit of doing that more often, where I actually show you the reference pictures that I use for my paintings because I haven't in the past and I feel like it's kind of vital that I do. It's certainly a pertinent detail of painting, especially if you're going from reference, so I want to make sure that you guys at least know like what I'm trying to recreate. I feel like that would be pretty helpful. Uh, for the viewer and also for me because I want to make sure that I am accurately representing myself in these videos. I guess the only thing that I have to say about this painting because it was my first with the gouache was that I wasn't enjoying myself up until I started like filling the entire page with color and then layering paint on top of other layers of paint. When I was blocking in those big sections of green and black, I was kind of doubting myself a little bit. I feel like I feel that way every time I explore a new art supply because you're just not familiar enough with the medium yet to understand how it works. So much like my experiments with watercolor, this was just a brand new opportunity for me to figure out exactly how these paints behave, make sure that I was using them appropriately, and just pay attention to my reference image so that I was painting things so that they looked correct. I'm sorry for how much of the top of my post-nap bed head you have to see in this video. I'm, I'm still getting used to this overhead angle kind of thing. This is brand new territory for me as a YouTuber, so I'm just making sure that what you see is clearly represented on screen, and unfortunately that meant that I had to change up my camera angles for next time. You will hear me commiserating about this in just a short moment, but for now, enjoy the rest of this speed paint. <laughs> you probably know why I look this grumpy, and it's because when I watched the playback of my speed paint last night, my head was in like 50% of the video. I'm a bad YouTuber. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be so mad at me. I'm gonna get thumbs downs. People are gonna call me out for my unprofessionalism. And I know, I know it's because I sit on the floor. If I had like an art table that I could use on the floor that was like, risen up off the ground a little bit, I wouldn't lean over so far over my book in order to paint. 
I have to rethink my methods here. And I feel so bad about this that I feel like I have to do a second painting now because, well, frankly, it would be fun to play with that gouache again. But honestly, I just feel bad because I tried to provide art content on this website. And frankly, uh, if my head is covering the art that I'm doing, then that's not very good content. <laughs> so... So I'm going to show you a sketch that I did this morning. It's of my shoes. These are my Doc Martens, but they're like holographic and sparkly. I call them my disco docs. I'll post a picture of them up on the screen so that you can see the reference that I used to draw these. And I'm really excited to try uh, painting these as well, not only because I want to provide you guys with a painting <laughs> that I complete that I'm not covering with my head, but also because it would be nice to get some different colors in here. Because yesterday's painting, while I'm quite a fan of it, uh, was very green and yellow and orange and brown. It's just nice to play with some of the other colors. I used so much green in this that I was like, ah, I'm gonna run out of green already. <laughs> so yeah, it will be nice to get a good color scheme in here. I'm doing a different kind of still life. I'm probably not gonna do the background of the photograph. I might do something just very sort of like illustrative and stylized. So yeah, let's do that tonight and then we can call this video complete. Ah, that's so much better. An adjustment of camera angle really makes all the difference in the world. Basically, you're not seeing like a dead on overhead shot. It's sort of angled where I'm a little farther away from the camera. So I wasn't leaning over my paper anymore. And I'm so much more pleased with that. It's going to be something that I remember in the future for when I do these types of things. I was really excited to get stuck in with this one. My anxieties about this included me kind of losing the details of the sketch that I did. Shoes are difficult to draw, at least I think so, and I thought I did a really decent job at sketching out these boots. I did it entirely by hand, like, <laughs> I was just sort of eyeballing it, and I was like, oh, I'm so proud of this sketch. What happens when I put paint on it if I just, like, lose all those details? But I don't know why I doubt myself when it comes to stuff like that, because this is something that I'm very used to doing. I've said in a previous video that I'm a really big fan of, like, finely rendering images and you know if you just take your time and go slow you can get enough of that detail back in there and then of course i added more detail by using different tones of color and heightening some of the details that were actually in the image i kind of edited the image in my phone a little bit to bump up the saturation and the contrast a little bit just to bring out the iridescence of those boots because i didn't think that the original image actually accurately showed how colorful they are like they're a very bluish sort of silvery leather but then when you hold them in the light they shine all different colors kind of like an oil slick and that's what makes them pretty and <laughs> the reason that I bought them because I, I love shiny rainbow things I can't help myself color is saturated into every aspect of my life so naturally my footwear should be also On the corner of the screen there, you can see me very heavily leaning on my reference image. I was like zooming in and trying to get all the little details, especially when it came time to add the little sparkles of differently colored paint on top of the boots. So that's basically what I did was I painted the boots. I chose like a smoky blue and then I painted the highlights and the lowlights. And then I came in at the end and jazzed them up with little dots of pink and green and yellow and purple and all sorts. That's how I brought them to life. And then at the end here, I had this vague idea that I wanted to put in like a background of sorts, just to sort of like let the image pop a little bit. And then I had like these stencils in my collection. So I decided to trace these very sort of basic geometric shapes and have them overlap almost like spots of light and then like shine in different colors. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, 
It was an idea, and once I started it, I couldn't stop. So <laughs> I just decided to fulfill that part of the painting and not worry about how it looked. And I think it's gonna take a little bit of practice with the gouache to get like a fully flat wash of color, because if you dilute it, it comes out a little bit spotty and textured. And that wasn't the look I was going for. I really wanted like as flat a color as possible, but it was an idea. And frankly, once I start something, I have to commit to it. Morning, Scritches. Oh, you're so sweet and flirty. Good morning. It's early. I haven't even had my caffeine yet, but um, I wanted to give you an opportunity to see the painting, the finished painting, up close and personal. I realize when I shoot things overhead that they tend to be kind of far away. And with sort of the image quality of my phone camera, there really isn't an opportunity to like get in there really close and see what was going on. So this is for y'all. This is hopefully going to give you a better idea of what I completed last night. Here she is, my disco docs. I'm so pleased with how the shoes came out. Less pleased with the blocky uh, shapes of color. And what I did off camera was I put in these white lines to sort of separate the shapes a little bit more distinctly in white gel pen. So that was really the only detail that you didn't see me do. I think both of these paintings really gave me a good introduction to gouache and I'll definitely be using it again in the future. This isn't the only video where that will happen. I just thought it was uh, cool to get two different kinds of paintings in this video. Two for the price of one, how about that? It's time for me to say goodbye to all the family. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Okay, time for me to say bye-bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you again. Hopefully next week you will be able to see the larger art project that I've been working on because I've given myself an extension now, a week-long extension to get that done. Because it's not just really about the art piece, is it? It's about filming and editing the video for it. So hopefully I've given myself a lot of wiggle room now that I can get that done and you will enjoy it. But in the interim, I hope you have a lovely day. And until I see you next time, Ciao, everybody.